Hey everyone and welcome back. So in this video we're going to build on from the previous tutorial where we got the media player and the video working. If you haven't seen that already, it's in the miscellaneous playlist. Uh, go and check that out as it will be important to actually get the final step working. What we'll do today though is get the chroma material set up and uh, we'll remove this green background from the video material that we have. So this is actually really simple. If you have watched my previous videos on this, uh, like I said previously, they're slightly outdated now and some of it stopped working. And I think there's actually a new feature that wasn't available at the time that I created that. I think they've kind of used a lot of the techniques that I was using then and condensed it into a single node in the material editor. Uh, I may be wrong there. I'm not saying that they use my specific uh, material stuff either. Just the fact that the similar techniques and variables that were working with to remove the alpha uh, seems to have all been condensed into a single node that I don't remember existing before. So what we want to do is go to the movies folder to get this started. We're going to go to our material that we have here. I'm just going to rename this actually to uh, M underscore green screen, just so it's a little bit easier to find things because all of these are just called green screen at the moment. I'm going to call the texture T underscore green screen as well. Okay, so we can just navigate between these a little bit easier. So inside of the material though, what we want to do is come and have a look at getting rid of the opacity down here. So the first thing to get that working is we're going to change the blend space so you can do that by either selecting the main node here or the background and we want to change the blend mode from opaque to translucent so previously there were quite a lot of maths equations and um, sections that we needed to break apart and then rebuild to remove the opacity in the media and like I've mentioned this is actually a lot simpler now so it should be quite a short video uh, what we want to do is we're going to pull off of our texture sample and we're going to type chroma and we can see here we now have a new option for opacity and the chroma key alpha. We just want to make sure that this isn't in the luma mask, but we want to hook this up to the image color and then quite simply plug this in to opacity. So this is going to take the alpha from what we're passing in here and uh, remove that from the opacity. So we need to make sure that we have an argument for what this node is classing as the alpha or specifically the chroma color. So if we hold V and left click onto the graph, we'll get a vector three parameter. We're gonna turn this into a material instance to make editing um, and doing some live changes to try and remove as much of the green as possible. Uh, we'll make that a lot easier if this is a material instance. I'm gonna call this one the chroma color. So we're gonna plug our chroma color into the chroma color pin just here. And then the other things that we're gonna to want to focus on is the cutoff, the minimum and the maximum. And this is quite handy because because we can actually keep this to be the same value. As I found in most cases, having them at the same value actually works best. So we're gonna press S and left click to get a scalar parameter. So this is just a single float value, which again will be exposed in the material instance. I'm gonna call this one the alpha min max. And of course, we're just gonna plug this in to the minimum and the maximum of the alpha cutoff. So this is how much alpha we're gonna be cutting away from the uh, chroma color. Uh, now, one thing I forgot to do is we want to get the color of our chroma here. So an easy way that we can do this is we open the parameter. If we use the color picker, and then we can just pick this green that we have in the example node here. I think that's gonna be as close as we can get to the exact color. And if we hit apply and save, we can go and make our material instance. We'll apply that to the pane, and that is pretty much everything that we need to do. I'm gonna show you a few things that we're gonna do with this value as well, so that we can do our live checks to get this as close to removing all the green as possible. So if we right click on the M underscore green screen, create a material instance, I'm gonna call this one MI underscore green screen. If we just quickly drag that onto the plane, so it's the material instance that we're actually using this time. I'm gonna come in here, and I know for the specific video that I've used, a value of 0.3 actually works quite well. So you can see there already, that's removed most of the green from the background, if not all of it, tiny bit around the edge. And it's usually good to start at a value of around about 0.5, um, and then work from there to see what works for you. Now in this instance, 0.5 actually is overkill and removes everything. 0.4 may be a bit closer, but then we're getting some aliasing around the edges, which doesn't look very nice. So maybe somewhere just in between there. And from a distance, although there's some green here, from a distance, you really can't see it. And again, remember this was originally made for a VR experience. So again, you're working with even lower resolution um, and all of this actually ends up looking pretty okay. Okay, I've just done a quick light build to get rid of the weird green shadow that was down there. But now if we press play, we can see that we've removed pretty much all the green. It's very hard to see anything that was there. Uh, and this is now very, very clear to see what is going on with the video. Of course, do feel free to take note of the video playing, follow any of the steps that you feel would be valid. 
Um, but this is how we can get a simple green screen working with the, from what I'm aware of, the new chroma color material or the new chroma key alpha node. So the final things to mention really are if we go into the material in the master material, so not the instance, uh, if we click on the background, it's worth noting that we can make this two-sided. So at the moment, if we were to play this and move behind the video, it's obviously not going to be visible. So we can make this two-sided to correct that, which also means that this should work if you're projecting this into a sphere, which again could be very useful if you're putting this into some kind of VR experience, uh, but of course that's going to work better if you have a 360 video ready for that as well. Uh, but without change mode, I forgot that that plane actually has collision on. Uh, we can now see this from both sides, which works perfectly fine. So that might be helpful to have that two-sided option ticked as well. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that obviously we can get a live update in the material instance itself, uh, but if you wanted to do this in runtime, you can start playing around with things because we've exposed these variables to get a better idea of how well this is going to be blocking things out and cleaning up the edges and stuff. Uh, and also you can test the color that works best for the actual chroma material and what we're going to be ignoring too. So all of these changes can be made at uh, runtime so that we can get some really nice clean fixes to the chroma material. With all of that said though, that pretty much wraps up the chroma material. Like I said, it's a lot easier to do now than it was previously. I definitely don't remember this being available last time I implemented this. Um, I'm pretty sure I looked into a lot of things before trying to tackle this myself because I'm not very good with materials. Um, so this definitely helps a lot and opens up the opportunity for some really cool VR, AR experiences and things like that where we can take videos and project them onto things without the, the background being there. So I'll leave that video here for today though. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps and is much appreciated. And of course, if you haven't already, do consider subscribing to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.